Hey guys! I am so pumped to talk to you guys about Instagram today. I'm just gonna give it a couple minutes, give you time to pop on. I know it's a little bit of a delay when you first start a live video. When you guys pop on, if you wanna comment or show me a heart or something so I can see you. Hey Angelica! Hey guys! I see you now. I'm super pumped. So, probably gonna start off just introducing myself to you for those of you who don't know me. I'm seeing a lot of new faces um, in this group, so I'm super pumped to get to talk to some new people. Hey, Erin. I see um, my team in here, so they're gonna be like, heard this before. <laughs> heard the spiel from Jen before, but hopefully it'll be some new info for the rest of you guys. Um, and you'll have some new tips and tricks to in a, integrate into your Instagram. So there's a bunch of you on, so I'm gonna just kick off. So I'm Jen Richardson. I started coaching in 2013 as a discount coach. Um, my coach, Stephanie Chico, tried to get me to work the business and I was like, girl, I'm not interested. Let me just drink my shake, leave me alone. <laughs> and she was like, okay. Um, but after a year of discount coaching, I was like, you know what? This business is incredible. This company is incredible. I was seeing so much opportunity everywhere from all of these other coaches that were just killing their business. And I'm like, why am I not doing this? Like, why am I not actively working this business? So I kind of had a mindset shift at the end of 2013. And I was like, I'm gonna go all in. What do I have to lose here, right? Um, so for the most of 2013, and I will tell you guys, maybe some of you in here are discount coaches or hobby coaches or aren't like 100% in your business just yet. Um, I made a point, even as a discount coach, to share everything. Like everything, every part of my journey, the ugly selfies, the discouraging pictures, the you know non-scale victories, the frustration when I wanted to give up, I kind of put it all out there for people to see. Um, not even having a game plan, guys, like it wasn't even my head like, I should share my journey. It was kind of just like accountability for me. If I put it out there, and I, and I to this day say this, if we put something out there, guys, people naturally wait to see if you fail. It's just human nature. So when I announced um, in 2013 that I was gonna go all in, I was gonna lose this 50 pounds, I was gonna get healthy, I knew there were people that watched that post and were like, let's see until she quits. Let's see how long it takes until she quits. And that's just life. So part of me was like, I'm gonna share every day of this journey of mine to kind of prove those people wrong. So it was like accountability, but it ended up being so beneficial for my business because people needed to see that transition of me starting here and working my way to here. So when I did go all in in 2014, I had like a platform already kind of built for me unintentionally. So I say this to you guys so you know the importance of sharing. But we're talking about Instagram, so I'll keep fast forward a little bit. So 2014, I jumped all in and I told myself this will be a year of sacrifice. So we all have different goals in our business and I think it's really important that you guys know your goal before you start working. You need to know what you want to achieve from this business. So for me, my goal was to quit my full-time job. Ali Dar, if you send me another angry face, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come after you. <laughs> I love you, I'm just kidding. I knew I wanted to quit my full-time job. I was a criminology major in college. I was like totally positive I was gonna be an undergraduate professor for criminology. Couldn't have been more wrong there. Um, and so I was working for my dad in, uh, for his company, he's an um, international security consultant. And so I was working for him and I was kind of like, I love you dad and I love this, but this is not what I wanna do with my life. Um, so I knew that I wanted to quit, but I knew I needed to replace that income. So I told myself 2014 was gonna be a year of sacrifice and I knew that it was gonna take some hard work and effort. So what my coach told me, what Steph told me when I jumped in is to use your Facebook, use your personal page, you know, 
go through your friends list, try to figure out people <clears throat> to fall, you know, to network with, put a dream team list together. So I did that. And I will be real with you guys, my warm market could not have been more uninterested in everything I was doing as far as joining me. It was basically like, cool, I'm gonna watch you, I'm gonna watch you do those workouts, um, but I do not wanna buy your shakes and I do not wanna join your team. So thanks for that, but no thanks. So that can be really discouraging and I'm sure that some of you guys in here have been there. Like you're putting your life out there, you're sharing your journey, but your warm market could be less interested. Like they're just not wanting to do this. They just, you know, there's no connection there. So I could have said to myself, you know what? I suck at this. Like I'm clearly not going to be a good coach. I should probably just go back to my full-time job and not focus on this coaching thing. But no, no guys, <laughs> that's not what we should be doing. Um, we should think, how can I think outside of the box? And how can I do this thing even if my warm market could care freaking less? So Facebook for me didn't work because my Facebook was pretty much everyone I already knew and everyone wasn't interested. So I went to Instagram. And a couple years ago, Instagram is not what it was now. It was super basic. So we have so many more tools now that I'm gonna dive into you guys a little bit today um, that we can use to really network on Instagram. But what I did, bare bones basic, was I would I put together an interest list of all of the things about me that had nothing to do with fitness and nothing to do with beach body. And here's why. And this principle applies just as much as it did then as it does now. I did not want to attract other beach body coaches. I love y'all, but you are not going to join my team because you're already on a team. So there's no point in me posting things to try to get your attention. I want to get the attention of the people that aren't already in our network so that they will want to join me. So they will want to make me their coach and they will want to join my team. That's our goal, right? So putting together an interest list of having Beachbody being one of them or making my post all about Shakeology, those things are not going to help me expand my network. They're not. Um, and something I hear so often from coaches is I feel like only other coaches are following me. I'm only attracting other network marketing companies. What am I doing wrong? And I beg you to take a look at your social media and look and see what am I putting out there? Is my feed predominantly fitness related beach body stuff? Because if it is, that is why you're attracting those people because that's what you're putting out there. So back up a little bit, that interest list I made and I still tell all of my new coaches to do this and I'm telling all of you guys to do it even if you are not, even if you think that you are the most boring person that ever walked the face of the earth, I guarantee you that you're not. Um, I want you to put this interest list together. If you've been a veteran, if you're a veteran coach, you've been a coach for a couple years, revamp your list. I try to revamp my interest list every couple months to reach new kinds of people. Now, with this interest list, when I started coaching, I it was more like moms of babies. It was baby wearing. It was breastfeeding. It was these kinds of things. I have a four and a six year old now, so none of those things pertain to me. So we are ever evolving people and our interests are ever evolving. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to make a list of 10 things that you either are interested in currently and do. For example, do you go kayaking? Do you go hiking? Are you a runner? Um, like, what do you do for fun outside of your life? Then think about things that are interests. Um, what kind of shows do you watch on TV? Are you like a reality show junkie? Um, do you like DIY shows? Is Fixer Upper like your go-to, you must watch it? Think of things that you enjoy. Think of things that you like to watch because those are the people you want to attract to you. You want to attract those people because those are the people you're going to click with. And I will tell you guys this. Most of the people that will one day become your customer and one day join your team, they will connect with you because of all the other things that you are posting about on social media and not necessarily fitness. I will tell you that almost all of my coaches I got from a connection that we bridged had nothing to do with me working out at all. They connected with me and so they decided to you know, join me based on those other common interests. So you take this interest list. Try to think of 10. I'm gonna use surfing as an example because it is something that I cannot do to save my life, 
but I have an interest in it. So it doesn't have to be something you do. DIY is another one. I am an epic failure DIY projects. If you guys know me, you know that I love DIY shows, but I am not necessarily a good DIYer. <laughs> like, just not. But it's an interest. So what I do is I kind of Google search hashtags that pertain to the interest. So you'll Google search surfing. Google search popular hashtags for surfing. Boom, so much stuff pops up. Now this is where it gets tedious, and I won't sugarcoat this for you guys, it's tedious, okay? But this is what I did when I started, and it's what I still do now, okay? You're gonna Google search those hashtags, you're gonna plug the hashtags into Instagram, and you're gonna search through the feed of the people using those hashtags. Now I will tell you guys, just because a hashtag sounds good, does not mean that the people using it are people that you would necessarily want to connect with. And a really interesting one for me was Florida girl. So I live in Florida. I thought, hey, I'm a girl. I live in Florida. That totally makes sense for me to use that hashtag. But then when I really scrolled through the list of people using it at the time, it was not the type of people that I was actively trying to attract. So that hashtag, while it sounded good, wasn't good for me. So it's more than just picking hashtags that relate to your interests. It's really doing the research on the hashtags to see if the people using it are people that you would connect with. So again, it's tedious. Um, and so, I, so after I have this hashtag list, I put together 25 of the best hashtags that pertain to my interest list. Now, this list is crucial because you're gonna use this list every single day during your power hour. And I'm gonna throw some numbers at you guys um, because it changes at what stage of your business you're in. It changes on what your goals are at the time. Um, but when I started, and this was in 2014, my goal was 50 people a day. That sounds like a lot. It was. Um, 50 people a day that I wanted to add to my network and I wanted to actively converse with and relationship build with. Um, you can imagine by the end of the week how massive that list was. So I was a pen and paper person. I still love pen and paper for certain things, but when you are really getting started with trying to create a master list of who you're engaging with, I will tell you guys, pen and paper just does not work. It doesn't work for staying organized. Your follow-ups will get messy. It will be really hard to backtrack and look through the people that you were interacting with, who wasn't interacting with you. You know what I'm saying? So what I use is Google Sheets. You can, use a Google, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, but what I like about Google Sheets is that I can pull it up on my phone and I can pull it up on my computer and it syncs everywhere. And the next question I know you guys are thinking because this is what people usually ask me is what does my sheet look like? What does my Google tracker look like? And it's so basic. It's name, name of the person, and it shows it right on their Instagram, their name, their Instagram name, okay? The date I followed them, that's the next column. Date followed up because you want to, which I'll get into in a minute, but you want to make sure that you are in, you're going back and forth between people. So you're not going to follow up with every single person every day. We know none of us have the time for that. So you're going to pick and choose. So that date followed up tab is really important. Um, and then you're going to have a note section. This note section is almost as crucial as the rest. Because you, if you are doing 50 people a day, which I'm not saying you should, but I'm just saying that's what I did, um, you are quickly going to forget who the heck you followed three days ago on your fifth day. So the notes, I only put notes in for the people that are dream team material. These are the people that I really want to recruit, I really want to work with in some way, shape, or form. Um, and I will say in 2014, I was not sales focused, I was coach focused. My goal was to grow my team, it was not to recruit challengers. That was my focus then. Fast forward a few years, my focus has changed, but that's where I was then. So it was very recruiting focused. I was told early on to make big money in Beachbody, you wanna grow a team. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna recruit. This is what I'm gonna focus on. So my list at that time was very, um, who do I want to join my team? Who's on my dream team list? And the notes section referenced that. So in the notes I would say, she's a mom of two boys, 
So I related that back to myself. Um, she lives in Florida. I would relate back to myself. She loves, you know, she loves going to the beach, relating back to myself. So you're trying to find people that when you connect with them, that they look at your profile and they're like, yes, I totally get that. Like I vibe with her. Um, so you want to write in that note section why you followed them. What stood out about them that made you want to follow them? And not every single person on that list are going to be people that you want necessarily to join your team or a dream team material. People that you're following, you have a commonality with, right? That, that you have an interest. Their profile sparked you. You said, okay, I like these people. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are people you want to go all in and try to recruit to join your team. So that notes section on that Google tracker sheet, um, that Google sheet is really going to help you figure out like who you want to focus your time on. Okay, so backing up a little bit, how am I finding these people to add them to my Google Sheet? So I would go to the hashtags, like I said, and I would try to go to 50 people a day. So if there's 25 hashtags in your hashtag list that you've compiled, you're gonna go through different hashtags, maybe pick 10, and or maybe pick 20, whatever feels good for you. Um, and you're gonna go through those hashtags and look for people to follow. So basic, so easy. Um, the concept, but it's time consuming. And I'm not going to tell you guys it's not, but this is a huge part of my day. And years later, it still is a huge part of my day because the way I look at it is this. If I put a message out onto social media, if I put a post onto Instagram, only a small percentage of people are going to see that post. Only a small amount are going to put it, are going to see it. So I consider my Instagram post or my any social media post a Hail Mary, okay? I'm throwing it out there. I'm hoping people see it, but I cannot depend that Instagram is going to show it to the people that I want to see it. So by me going to these people's profiles and pages and commenting and liking their stuff, I have a 90% more chance of them coming back to my page and looking at my profile because I've gone to their page first and I'm bringing them right back to me. So it, your social media post is not enough. It can't be enough. You can't just be posting on Instagram or Facebook and, and that's gonna be the deal breaker for you. It has to be behind the scenes work that you're doing. So I probably spent, I want to say like two hours a day just doing this, like just doing the back and forth with Instagram. I started um, in 2014, I believe I had like 150 followers um, and now I have uh, I think almost 22,000, which it's not the most followers I've ever seen. Um, it's not the biggest Instagram account ever, but I have good engagement with the people I'm working with. I'm building good relationships. And for me, that's all that matters. I don't want to have a hundred thousand followers of a bunch of people that don't care about what I do. Don't genuinely want to connect with me. Um, that's just not, you know, it, it's just not what I want. I want really people that I'm connecting with. So that was kind of the growth and progression. I saw someone say two hours. Yes, two hours a day. That was in 2014. That, be, that was because I was in growth mode, okay? And like I said, we have to really dial back and say, what are your goals? My goal, I wanted to be a 15-star diamond coach. That was a goal for me. I wanted to be a six-figure earner. That was a goal for me. So I had to say to myself, what do I need to do to work 10 times harder than maybe the people around me if I want these goals? Your goal might not be 15 star diamond, and I am totally not telling you it should be at all. I am not saying your goal should be a six figure earner at all. You might just wanna make $200 a week, and that is awesome, and that is amazing, and then you should focus on that and re reverse engineer your goals to get you back to what your goal is. That's why I say it's so important that any training you guys listen to, any tips you write down, if you don't know what you're going for, it, it won't matter because you need to know how much time and energy to put into these activities to reach your goal at hand. Um, so that's why I, you know, really went all in and I really went hard on this for 2014 and a lot of 2015. Um, and I was able to go 15 star diamond coach in my first year of coaching. I made six figures. Um, I hit the million club in three years. So I, at this level of effort, you can achieve anything. I want you guys to know that. If you work your ass off hard enough, sorry, hopefully no kids are listening. Um, if you work hard enough, 
you can achieve anything. It's your level of effort that you want to put into the business and it's where you want to focus your time and energy. Um, and I 110% believe that. A lot of people say to me, this business is oversaturated. There's too many coaches. No, there's not too many coaches. What you guys need to think to yourselves is how can I outwork the coach next to me and how can I set myself apart to be different from all these other coaches in the network? What can I offer that's different? How can I run my business differently to set myself apart and make myself look special and different or whatever? That's what you guys wanna think about. And it might sound so basic that I'm talking to you guys about an interest list, but that is where you really need to dial it back and think about who am I, who am I trying to attract, and then what am I doing with it, okay? So I spend a portion of my day, so let's fast forward to now just what I do now. I do 10 or 20 a day, so no more of the 50. I spend one hour a day doing just Instagram. Um, and I spend a portion of the day going through the hashtags and networking. And then I spend a portion of the day on Instagram stories. And I'm not gonna dive too much in, into Instagram stories because I think Jatana is doing Instagram stories. I'm like looking at the board. Um, later this week. So I won't dive too much into that. But my biggest thing that I do on Instagram is following people. Well, let me let me say this. I spent years following people because you have the best chance of getting a follow back if you are following them. So what I would do, and I did this for two years, I just recently stopped doing this. I would follow and I would comment on their first three pictures. So I would say, and like genuine comment, you know what I mean? Like, a real comment. Oh, you're, you know, this, your son's adorable. Read the caption, take the time to read the caption and see what they're saying. Um, and I would like and comment first three pictures, move on to the next person. Um, but now I don't follow everybody. I'm still doing the same liking and commenting, but I'm not following only for personal reasons. I, I'm working on some sort of algorithm to have my follower count at a certain point to my following count. You guys don't really need to worry about that right now unless you're at a stage in your business where that pertains to you, but there is some sort of algorithm with the amount of people following versus followers. Um, there's this tool that I use and I am not a proponent of um, third-party apps anymore. Instagram had a ton of changes recently, which I'm gonna talk to you guys about in a second, um, but with third-party apps, you have to be really careful. There's something that is that happened called shadow banning and basically, if you um, disobey any of Instagram's policies or rules, they will block your account on certain aspects. So I was doing something incorrectly with hashtags, and so they blocked me from using hashtags. And so nobody could see the hashtags I was using. So it was really, really not good. Um, but anyway, so Instagram, they, they want you to follow like a certain, you know, a certain guideline of what you're doing. Um, and with the hashtags, what I was just talking about, I'll kind of back up with the shadow banning. Um, I used to teach in my trainings, and if you've listened to any of my YouTube videos, I would tell you to put that 25 hashtag list. So what I was talking about before is kind of your behind the scenes stuff that you're doing to network and engage, but what you wanna put on every single post are your hashtags so that people can find you, so they can come right back to your profile and find you. Um, and I was saying to put that hashtag list in your comments. Um, but Instagram changed the rules around a little and I actually, by putting my hashtags in my comments, I didn't realize was an Instagram no-no um, and they blocked my hashtags. So what I do now is I do less hashtags, but I put them in the caption and I break it up with like little dots. I know it's ugly. I know it's ugly. I hate having the hashtags in the comment, in the caption, but you got to play by Instagram's rules. So this is kind of like a newer thing. Um, but you want to have hashtags on your post. I was reading something that was saying like you have a 90% um, more visible, you have 90% more visibility if you use um, 15 or more hashtags on a post, which I thought was pretty astounding. So if you're posting something and you're not using hashtags, you really want to. Um, but yeah, I had to stop using my awesome hashtag list on every post because Instagram didn't like that. Um, so what I do now is I look at the post itself and I look at my hashtag list and I look at how those hashtags I have in my list pertain to my post. So I'm going to use an example. The other day I um, posted a picture of my kids doing yoga with me. 
Now, yoga, beach body yoga studio, that's like my jam right now. That's what I'm really getting into. Um, and obviously my kids are like the biggest part of my life. Um, so I set up my hashtag so that they pertain to yoga. So I'm attracting my yogis and then pertain to my kids. So it was like two sets of hashtags that pertain to the picture, but the hashtags varied. You know what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. Maybe I can post in the captions like an example of the hashtags I'm using. So if your interest list is being a mom and you're Google searching popular hashtags for being a mom and then you're looking at all of the list of those hashtags, get a group of them going for that interest so that on your post you can plug those hashtags into the caption and you can rotate them out. Um, I change my hashtags every two months um, because different people will start using the hashtags, certain hashtags will be irrelevant, um, but that's what I do. And so for every, so everyone's going to be a little bit different. And I like to use Steph Davies. I don't know if you guys know her. She's one of my close friends, and the way she runs her social media is similar in concept to mine. But if I tried using the same hashtag she does no one would be interested because we are such different people and we have such different interests. So while the quality of her pictures is amazing, the branding that she does, I couldn't use her hashtags and she couldn't use mine. So you guys really need to tailor these hashtags to you. I will tell you this, you do not want to be using basic like hashtags like Instagram fitness. Don't use that. Don't use ones that have like over a million um, have over a million people that are using that hashtag because your, your picture will get lost in the shuffle. And this is why I say when you do that Google search of your hashtags and you get your hashtag list and you're plugging them into Instagram, that's kind of your three steps of downing them. When you plug them into Instagram and you're really looking at what kind of people are using that hashtag, also look at how many people are using that hashtag. So what happens if a hashtag is being used by over a million people, when you post your picture, your, hash, your picture will get buried within five minutes. So if someone is trying to find people, if they're scrolling through hashtags and they're trying to network with people, um, they won't find you because your picture would have gotten buried. So I try to use hashtags that are, they have like maybe 50,000, 10,000 to 15,000, uh, 50,000, 10 to 50,000 is like a good range of how many people are using that hashtag because obviously it's used um, but it's not so massive that people won't find you. Maybe even up going into the 100,000. But once you cross over into like 500,000 and above, the time ratio of people being able to see that picture, it drops. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I see you guys commenting and I'm totally going to go back after I get off and I'm going to look through your questions. Um, but basically, you want to make sure that the quality of your hashtags are good in, in pertaining to Instagram and not just your interest list. So you can't skip that third step of plugging those hashtags in. Um, you need to make sure that you're going in and you're diving into it and you're doing that. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I do on all of my posts. Now the other thing is your quality of posts on Instagram is also really important. So if you've got this great interest list and you are you know, networking and you're rocking this interest list and you've got these great hashtags and you've done all this research, but then we go to your Instagram and we see you not posting or we see you not posting about the things that you're interested in. So these people that you're trying to attract, they come to your page and then they're like, wait a second, she said she was interested in surfing, but like there's nothing about the beach at all on her page. Or she said she was a mom, but like she doesn't have kids, they don't get it. So you wanna make sure that you're posting about things that are actually your interests and you're actually posting about. So I'll use my interest list, and again, I change that up. I'm, I'm constantly trying to reach out and branch out and widen my net as far as I can get it. Um, and so I'm changing that interest list up. I'm trying to pick up new things and, and switch it up all the time. So I will take my interest list and I'll look at the things I have on there and I'll say to myself, did I post about any of these things today? Did I post about being a mom? Did I post about my yoga? Did I post about Florida? Because that's like a niche for me. And I'll say to myself, did I post about these things? And for a lot of you guys who struggle with what to post about and what I should be putting on my Instagram or what I should be putting on my social media, this interest list will be huge for you to give you ideas of what to post about. Now I will say this, um, because a lot of people ask me how much should I be posting, how often should I be posting, 
Um, and I used to say between three and six times a day because before Instagram stories and before other ways of engagement, the way the algorithm worked on Instagram was the more often you post throughout the day, so like I posted every three hours or something like that, I had a higher engagement rate because Instagram was saying my account's very active, people are actively commenting and engaging on my posts, they're gonna keep bumping me up. Um, and that was how that algorithm worked. Well, it's different now for a couple reasons. Number one, the algorithm changed on Instagram. So it's no longer time, like in chronological order, which it used to be, which was awesome. Um, now it's engagement based, which I'm gonna talk about really, I'm gonna talk about in a second. Um, I'm gonna make a note to myself so that I don't forget to mention this to you guys. Um, but it's engagement based now. So what you'll see at the top of your feed are the posts that got the most interaction and got the most engagement of the people you're following. That's how it will get set up um, on your Instagram. So you wanna make sure that you are getting engagement going so that your post is visible. Comment pods. I just recently discovered this concept. So write that down, comment pods. How many of you guys are in a success pod? Or how many of you guys have a success partner? You can kind of show me a heart or something. If you don't have a success partner, if you're not in a success pod, you need to get that on your list of things to do, just in your business in general, to have people to run and bounce ideas off of is huge. Um, but comment pods on Instagram is massive and so huge and so important for this new algorithm of engagement, okay? Um, so what I did is I teamed up with a couple bloggers um, and we set up a comment pod. Now the comment pod that I set up, they're not Beachbody coaches, they do other things. I have a couple other girls in other MLMs and I have a couple of bloggers. Um, and you're in this pod and when you post something that you want to get engagement, let's say I'm doing a call to action, okay? And, or I'm posting about you know a new challenge group starting or something like that. I will go into my pod and I will say, hey guys, I just posted this post. Um, can you please go and comment and like it and blow it up? Now, a little note for you guys reference this algorithm. I am such a social media dork. I'm realizing this as I'm talking. Um, but with the, with the algorithm, with posting a picture, if it gets engagement within the first 10 minutes, if it gets good engagement the first 10 minutes, Instagram will push that post out to even more people because they see that that post is valuable. So the first 10 minutes, I could even say like the first 30 minutes, is like probably the most crucial timing for your post. So if you have a comment pod um, and you're like, guys, I'm, or you maybe even tell them beforehand if it's more time sensitive, like I'm getting ready to post something at noon today, can you guys pop into my page at noon um, and comment on this post? And that's kind of how it works with engagement. Some of you guys might notice you go to these accounts that have like 5,000 followers, um, but they will get like 800 likes on a picture or they'll get like 20 comments and you're like, wow, how are they doing that? I don't understand how they're getting so much engagement. And what most likely they're doing is they're in a pod with a bunch of people, excuse me, who are going to their post and blowing up their post and getting the algorithm to be like, boom, this post is awesome, and it's getting pushed out to a ton of people and therefore more people are seeing it. So I totally recommend comment pods. What I will say um, about the comment pods is they could be your success pod people. So I usually put my coaches in groups of like three or five. We actually just did a big success pod boom in my team page um, a couple days ago, and we, pod and we potted everybody up. And you can totally do common pods with your success your, your success pod too, or you don't have to. If you know someone that's a unique rep, or if you know somebody that's you know in another business and you wanna get a pod for this, this is purely for engagement, okay? These are not people that you need to team up with and hopefully attract them as a potential. This is just to get your posts seen by more people. But first and foremost, what we were talking about before, is you need to make sure you're setting the stage on your Instagram to attract those people to it. So um, I was saying about posting, you know, the three, three to six times a day I was doing before. Now you only really need to post twice a day if you're actively using Instagram stories, which I'm sure Jatana's gonna touch on. But what I've noticed with mine, and I'll just say this really quickly, um, if I'm actively posting on my Instagram stories throughout the day, I don't have to post an actual post on my page. Um, 
because the algorithm is working, my Instagram sees that my account is active, they see that I'm having engagement, they see people looking at my stories. So you don't actually have to post six times a day anymore. I would say two or three. I would say rule of thumb, you know, try to get two posts up. Maybe do one in the morning, one in the evening, or morning, afternoon, evening. Try to set it up like that. But be very conscious of the fact that you need to be posting things that pertain to your interest list. Um, if you are only posting Shakeology selfies, if you are only posting workout videos, if you are only posting about Beachbody, um, chances are you're going to lose people that you're trying to attract using your other hashtags. Um, something else that I think is really important is the quality of the picture. So, and I kind of use this, use this example when I do other trainings, but if you're walking through the bookstore and you're trying to pick a new personal development book, what grabs you first about the book? Usually the cover. I mean, you say, you know, you're, you're walking through the bookstore, you don't know what the book's about, you don't know anything, you just see the cover. What draws you to the book, the cover? So your Instagram, think of it like that. When someone pops to your page and they can see like those first 10 posts or whatever, what do they think about you based on those posts? Are your pictures dark? Are they blurry? Um, you know, is are they messy? Are they clean? Are you showing a you know a clear vision of what you're talking about in your picture? Do a social media audit on yourself. Go to your social media and say, if I was somebody else scrolling through and I came upon my profile, what would I think about myself? Um, and something I recommend, more so on Instagram than Facebook, because Facebook is the way it's set up is just simply different. You scroll through a feed, usually when you're scrolling through um, Facebook, it's your timeline. So you're just seeing post, post, post. But when somebody comes to your Instagram, they are seeing this clear, laid out, like collage of images. And I think in the first like 10 seconds, our brain is either like interested, not interested, and that's just how we work as human beings. So more so, so outside of your interest list and the people interested in the things you're interested in, I also take it a step further and I think to myself, the type of people I'm trying to attract will be, they will like my visual aesthetics of my branding, which is a whole other topic for another day, so I won't go too much into that. Um, but I picked branding aesthetics for myself when I really got into Instagram. And I like bright imagery. I like bright, clean clear, crisp pictures. Some people do really well with very muted, neutral tones, kind of darker pictures. It works for them. Again, I'm gonna use Steph Davies as an example because if you go to her, her Instagram, her imagery is more dark and muted, but it's beautiful. So I'm not saying bright and colorful and pops of color everywhere with white is what you need to do, but you need to find some sort of branding aesthetic and stick with that. So the app that I use to edit all of my pictures, and I use my iPhone, I don't have a professional camera, um, is Pick Tap Go. It is an iPhone app. I don't know if they have it for Android. One for Android I know because my husband has it on his phone is called Snapseed. So Pick Tap Go is what I use. I've also dabbled with Snapseed. Essentially they do the same thing. But if you have a picture that you take and it's kind of dark, and not in a good way dark, but it's just dark because the lighting wasn't good. Um, you can go into this app and you can brighten up the picture. But when I talk to you guys about branding on Instagram, I use the same filters on all of my pictures. So if you go to my Instagram, and for those of you guys who don't follow me, I'm Jen Fit Couture on Instagram. But if you go to my Instagram and you look at my pictures, you can see they all have the same feel. Um, and so that's part of your branding for your Instagram, that it kind of looks the same. I use the same kind of filters, the same sort of editing tools um, on all of my pictures. So you might wanna play around with your imagery as you really decide to jump into these things that I'm telling you to do if you don't already do them and create a vision for what you want your Instagram to look like because people, our brains, the way we work are very visual. And before they'll read your caption of your picture, which may be so clever and you've thought about it for so long, they're gonna decide they wanna read that caption because of the picture you took. So if the picture is clear and, or it has like a, you know, the photography aspect of it is good, you have a much greater chance of people reading your caption and not just scrolling by your picture. 
So a lot of people talk about social media training. I did photography training. I joined photography groups. I'm not a photographer, but I did training on that to try to understand the visuals of photography and how to put together my social media so it looked a certain way and had a certain feel. So there's multiple steps with growing your followers on Instagram. The first and foremost, I'll just kind of rehash before I wrap this up. The first and foremost is that interest list. It's finding out who you are trying to attract. Don't use that Hail Mary post to attract people. Focus on who the people you are trying to attract, okay? And then generate the hashtags that pertain to that interest list. That's your step two. Then you're gonna find time in your day to use these tools that you've just created to network with people. Take that hashtag list and part of your power hour, go to people on that hashtag list of yours and comment and like and follow and network and engage. People need that personal connection, okay? Like they need that, they need that to connect with you to come back to your page. And then make sure you're using your hashtags on your post itself. Make sure you're switching them up. Make sure you're using hashtags that are good, that you've researched, that will bring the right people back to your page, and make sure you're putting them on your post. I use little dots. I might have said that already, I can't remember, but I use little like periods, and I do three in a row. Um, and that's all I do to separate my post from the hashtags, and I see a lot of people doing that. Um, and it seems like it's more common now. You know, I was saying, don't put them in the caption, put them in the comments, but you know, people know the rules of Instagram, so more people are doing it and they expect it. Um, and so you're gonna do that. You're, and then you're gonna use those hashtags for your own posts. So not just networking, but your own. And then you're gonna take it a step further and you're gonna take a look at your, your Instagram and you're gonna look at the quality of the pictures, you're gonna look at the quality of the posts, and you're gonna go from there. So it's like a multi-step process. Um, before I jump off, I'm going to talk really quickly about my funnel process. Um, so it's great. You've, you've got these people on your Instagram, they, they're following you, they're interacting with you, but how does it pertain to your business? How does it pertain to Beachbody? How do you get these followers and decide and get them over to whatever you're trying to get them to? Um, and so what I do is I have like a two week process where I work with these people. Like I said, not every peop not every person you add to the Google tracker sheet are going to be dream team people. At this point in my business, I pick 10 a month. I pick 10 a month that I want to work with, and I only take 10 girls a month onto my team. I know a lot of coaches take a lot more. I only take 10. Um, that's just what I feel like I can mentor and that I feel good about taking. So 10 is like my magic number with my business right now. It just keeps things simple. Um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm actively like engaging with those 10 people that I'm trying to recruit through direct message, okay? So some people bring them into email, some people bring them right over to Facebook. I keep them right there on Instagram where they're nice and comfy and it's direct message. So what I do is after the whole comment process, you know, where you're liking and commenting, if they're back to engaging with me, I notice them liking my post, I notice, notice them engaging on my post, I'll send them a direct message, but not about Beachbody. I never talk about Beachbody. Um, I'll send them a message about one of their posts. So let's say they posted a picture of like a really cute dress, okay? And I'll, instead of commenting on the post, where's that dress from, I bring it into direct message. And I'm like, hey, like where's that dress from? It's really cute. I have this event coming up and I feel like it would be perfect and I love it. And you go from there, okay? And then you start the conversation. You can usually tell with the way someone responds to you in an initial conversation if they're gonna give you one word answers or if they're gonna be engaging. So if someone writes back to me, Lulu's, and that's it. I'm like, okay, you know, I might try to keep going a little bit more and see if she changes her mind and decides to interact. But if she doesn't, more often than not, I mark them in yellow on my page that I highlight. And that's how what I do on my Google tracker. Red means not interested. I never delete people because I wanna know that we had that connection at one time. I highly have been red. Yellow are people that are just not engaging with me. Like I want to engage with them, but they're not, they're yellow. Greens are people that are actively engaging with me. I feel like there's a lot of potential there. I highlight them in green. Um, but somebody you know that is actively engaging with me, their conversation might go something like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Like I got it from blah, 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 da, 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 da. And then you go from there, okay? Um, another thing with types of messages and types of conversations that I bring into direct message, um, I try to pick topics that I feel like the conversation can go a little bit further. 
Um, clothing is an easy starter, but it's harder to keep the conversation going. So I'll give you another example. I recently had all of these thyroid issues. So not even intentionally as a niche market, but just because it was you know part of my life, I started posting about thyroid stuff and connecting with other people. So now as a conversation starter with people that are dealing with thyroid issues, asking them a question about their treatment plan or what they went through, um, th these are not even like intentional, like I'm trying to use thyroid disease to connect with these people so I can get them into a free group. It's not that, it's just an interest that if someone is actively dealing with something like that, you have a more, you have a greater chance of strengthening your bond. So when you're forming your interest list, think about things that you feel really passionate about, you feel really strongly about, um, that when you conversations start with these people, it can go further. Okay, so these conversations start off basic, whether it's about kids or clothes or health or whatever it is, and then after about two weeks of conversation, again, this is why that date follow tab in your Google tracker is so important, about two weeks after that, if I feel like the conversation is going well, I will invite them to a free group that pertain to their interest. Okay, so this isn't free group training, I realize that, but what I do to do my crossover as part of my funnel is free groups. It's crucial to my funnel process. I run two free groups a month that, per, that don't usually pertain to like fitness. They're different. So, I mean, it can pertain to fitness, but it's not like an ab challenge. It's not like a squat challenge. It's more specific. So we just did like a yoga challenge, for example, and we did like a pose of the day. Um, we do personal development free groups. We're doing a budgeting group this month. Um, think about your interests. We did a DIY group. We did a crunchy living group. You guys, groups for days about your interest list. Again, back to that interest list. It's so important. Um, and so I use that interest list to formulate my free groups. And then the people that I'm networking with two weeks prior to the launch of that free group are the people that I'm going to be messaging with. Okay, so we're gonna be messaging about that interest. So if it's DIY, for example, that's that interest I'm focusing on because my free group is in two weeks, those are the people I'm talking to. So the conversation naturally shifts to my free group because they don't know that my free group's starting in two weeks. I haven't announced it anywhere. Only I know, only you know when your free group's starting. All they know is you're interacting with them about DIY, which they like and you like, and it's an interest for both of you. So after this two week conversation, maybe I'm asking about chalk paint. Maybe I'm asking about how she refinished her buffet in her dining room. Like, how did she do it? Um, then I will say, you know what? I decided to run a free group about DIY. Um, and I'm gonna bring in some other coaches and we're gonna talk about different DIY projects. Do you think you'd be interested in that group? Guys, more often than not, they are gonna be interested in your free group because it's right up their alley. It's exactly what you guys have been talking about. You're not pushing anything on them. They don't feel at all like you're trying to sell them something because you guys were just talking about chalk paint for two weeks. You were talking about how to refinish your buffet in your dining room. So this natural progression of the conversation feels very organic. It feels very genuine. You probably just developed a friendship and that's the key. You never want to network with someone that you wouldn't be friends with. You want to network with people that you would be friends with, that you would hang out with every day in real life. Do you know what I mean? These are real people that you really want to connect with. So I invite them to my free group um, and then I cross them over to Facebook. And that's when I get them into my funnel on Facebook, which is a totally different topic for another day. For the people that don't have Facebook that I'm connecting with on Instagram, I do two different things. The first thing is I usually suggest that they, they create a, a blank account, which most are willing to do. I'm like, just create a Facebook, like doesn't even have to be your real name, just make something and I'll pop you into the group and then you'll have access to everything. And then I explain to them that I run two free groups in there a month. I call it my Ficator community group. Everything goes in there, all my free groups. Um, and then I bring them over and they're like, okay, I'll do a blank account. Some people are like, I am against Facebook. I hate Facebook. There's nothing you can do to get me on Facebook. Um, I do things via email instead. You can use the challenge tracker app. For me, free groups on the tracker app doesn't work for me. Might work for you. You could totally try it. Um, I didn't really like it, so I don't really do it, but I bring it over to email and I do a more one-on-one -on -one with them. So if the post of the day was a video and then it was a tutorial, that written tutorial, and there was some imagery, I will take the post of the day and I'll be like day one DIY group and I'll email it, boom, send it off. And then we'll develop the relationship even more so through email. 
Um, and But most of the time I can get them to Facebook. And then I use those free groups to connect with them even more. So our conversations get deeper, we continue to talk. Then I time that if I'm trying to recruit them as a coach or I'm trying to get them into a challenge group, I two weeks after the free group, I have a challenge group that starts and I have a glimpse group. So my the way my calendar works, it's very strategic on my conversations. So two weeks after the free group, my challenge group starts. Two weeks after the free group, my glimpse group will go off. And I will invite to that. I'll be like, you know what? Seriously, no pressure. I have loved getting to know you for the past month. Um, and I think you'd be amazing on my team. I have to just ask you, would you want to join my glimpse group? It's totally free. You could just get the information, see what you think about coaching, and let's go from there. But this is one month, basically, of conversation. They know you by now. They like you. You guys have connected. So it, it's more genuine. It's not just sending out that cold message and saying, hey, join my team. Like, I'm doing this glimpse group. I don't know you and you don't know me, but you should totally do it anyways. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't seem to work anymore. I used to do cold messages. I used to do hey girls. To me in 2017, those don't work anymore. So you gotta roll with the punches and see what works. And for me, this funnel process works really well. I do all of my recruiting on Instagram, all my challengers, all my coaches, everyone comes from Instagram basically. Um, and then I funnel them through a free group, into a challenge group or into a glimpse group, depending on why I connected with them in the first place. So that's kind of it guys in a nutshell of how I run Instagram. I know there was tons of questions. I feel really bad that I wasn't able to answer them as they were coming, um, but I will pop back in and I will try to answer um, all of those questions. But thank you guys for popping on. I hope this was helpful. I hope that if you don't use Instagram, now you're going to, and I hope that um, it'll help you grow your business and help you bridge more connections. But anyways, have a great day guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.